two childhood friends on a dream holiday. <laughs> Fishing with a guide in the Sea of Cortez. But when their boat crashes on a remote Mexican island, their trip becomes a nightmare ordeal. We're out of food, we're out of water. Now we got nothing. Exposed to the harshest of environments, these self-proclaimed city boys must rely on each other to survive. We could die here, and nobody is ever going to find my bones. Jump, jump! I can't do it. You get over here. Jump now! Joe Wrangle is on a dream fishing cruise in Mexico's Sea of Cortez. <laughs> I've always been pretty much of a city boy. I, I like going outdoors, I like going fishing, I love going fishing. And when I started going on these trips, I found my niche. To me, that is the greatest trip in the world, is to go down there for six days, get on a boat, and forget everything. Just fish till you drop. To share the experience, he's invited his childhood friend, Lorenzo Madrid, along for the trip. I first met Lorenzo Madrid when we were in um, junior high school. What? We were pretty much good time boys. Oh, yeah, she cuts your beard. Hey, shut it. <laughs> he was a good guy to hang around with. Well, boy. The men are based on a tour ship anchored off Guardian Angel Island, 20 miles from the Mexican coast. The east side of the island is popular with fishing tours, but today their local guide, Pepe, is taking them to a remote cove on the more exposed western coast. It's quiet, it's desolate, you're all alone. Here she comes, come on. It's like fishing nowhere else in the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. It's fantastic. <laughs> I can't believe it. Look at that, Joe. Try another lure. Get out of here. You think I don't know what I'm doing? Well, how many have you caught today? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the detour to the remote side of the island pays off. After a successful day's catch, the two friends are more than happy with their guide, Pepe. He's a nice kid. He's outgoing, willing to please. Pepe did not speak any English at all. <laughs> what did he say? The bucket's too small, man. The bucket's too small. Vamos, no? Sí, vamos. As the sun starts to set, it's time to head back to the tour boat. Hey, I'm back. We just sat down and opened the beer and start get the ride back to, to, the, to the big boat. But when Pepe swings south, the boys begin to wonder if they're heading in the right direction. The tour boat was anchored on the northern tip of the island. Hey, Larry, right? Should we go? No, I don't think right so. Away? Yeah. This stuff's not familiar to me. Pepe, from the bus. So we asked him, isn't the boat back there? And he said, no, while you guys were fishing, the boat passed us. And they went this way. I didn't say it. No, I didn't mean it. We figured he's a professional, he knows what he's doing, he knows where he's at. And we left it at that. But after an hour motoring south along the island's coastline, 
There's still no sign of the tour boat. And Pepe has more immediate concerns. Joe! He tells us, I think I'm running out of gas. What's up? No fuel is what's up. Oh, it just gets better. It was a bad situation. It was dangerous. They have just minutes before the engine cuts out. And without power, Joe knows they can't steer the boat and could easily be swept out to sea by the currents. That's in the speech this while you have power. Their only hope is to make it to land. But the island's coastline is a fortress of jagged rocks and sheer cliff faces. He said, there's no beaches. This whole island is rocks. They know they have no option but to try to reach the shore. Between the current and the sharks, I'd rather take my chance on land than out in the water. The only thing you can see is the white of the pounding water on the rocks. We were scared. The only way to reach land is to power the boat directly into the raging surf. But just as it seems, they'll make it safely. A surge of water hit me from behind and forced me into the, into the rocks. The men make it to shore, but they're now stranded on the island with no way of calling for rescue. Larry, hold on there. You're totally soaked. The wind is blowing, and we started shivering down to the bone. The men search for driftwood and build a fire, using up their last few drops of fuel to get it going. Once we got the fire going, we were able to dry off, and it wasn't all that unbearable anymore. That's so bad now, Larry. We knew it should have been an easy thing for the big boat to pick us up the next morning. It's calls for a beer. The men resigned themselves to a night out in the open, believing their stay on the island will be a short one. If I want to pick us up in the morning, we are. They spend the next morning waiting to be collected. My guess was that we would be picked up no later than noon. All we have to do is just wait, and the boat should be here. Midday comes, and there's no sign of rescue. Now it's getting a little bit more serious as the day is wearing on. We need to get out of here. Mid-afternoon, and Pepe drops a bombshell. I said, well, I don't think they're going to pick us up. The men are washed up on the side of the island that fishing boats never visit. Their tour boat won't look for them here. They're not going to come this way. They're not going to look for us. It's like somebody just pulled the bottom out from under you. The only way to get out of here is if we do something about it. What are you doing? What's he saying? He said the only way we're going to get off of here is if we do something ourselves. Pepe comes up with an audacious plan to get them back to the mainland. He says we can bail it out. 
Get it on the sea. Maybe we can use it. Is he serious? He said, we can take this boat across. We can row across. Between the three of us, we can get it over there. With no fuel for the boat's engine, they'll have to row to the mainland. But it's a 20-mile journey across open seas. It was an unbearable hot day, probably close to 100. But it felt good to be doing something. We actually thought we could make it. For two punishing hours, the men row in the intense heat, their hands torn by the rough driftwood paddles. I'm getting exhausted. I am getting to the point where I'm just gonna drop. As the sun dips towards the horizon, the men's stubborn determination finally pays off. You can see people on boats. They didn't hear us, they didn't hear us, they didn't look, they didn't, they didn't do anything. They can't see us. Joe, keep paddling. The men push on, hoping to close the distance to the shore. They make progress for another hour. But from nowhere, they're gripped by a powerful undercurrent. We're going back or something. What? We're going back. What do you mean? It's a very strong current. It's a really strong current. It's far away. Now we couldn't make any headway. The tide has turned, and it's pulling them backwards. Come on, Joe, come on! Ah. We're trying frantically to row faster. Come on, take come on, come on! Ah. Come on! It's not that come on! Ah. We're not moving. We are in some deep trouble. As night falls, the men give in to their exhaustion. But as they sleep, they're being dragged back ever closer towards the rocky shores of the island. Joe, Barry, yeah. yeah. Joe. Joe, wake up! Oh, Fuck! Stop panicking, buddy! Ah, come on, yeah! Come on! The current was going to take us wherever it wanted. We're going to crash, and we're going to crash hard. Joe and Pepe make it safely to shore. But Lorenzo is thrown violently onto the rocks, severely spraining both of his ankles. The three men's attempt to escape the island has failed, and their boat is now completely wrecked. We didn't uh, talk much that night, Lorenzo and I. We're, um, we're pretty down in the dumps, we're depressed. 
400 miles away, in California, Joe's wife receives a phone call. That was when I learned that they were missing. I just was gone. I just, that was, I can't even describe it. It was like, you know, my feet were kicked out from me. Joe and Lorenzo wake up, knowing they are completely stranded on the barren, uninhabited island. There was nothing there, nothing that could give you shade. There was just nothing. Their only hope now is to be found by a search party, but they are in no physical condition for a prolonged wait. I was somewhat overweight, and I had found out uh, about a year earlier that I was diabetic. Joe suffers from type 2 diabetes, a condition where the normal levels of sugar in the blood can decrease rapidly. It's commonplace, but potentially life-threatening if not managed properly. And 50-year-old Lorenzo is unfit and grossly overweight. Lorenzo may have had health issues, I pressed him on it, but he said no, that he didn't. But then at the same time, he told me that he hadn't been to a doctor for years. As they face a third night out in the open, Pepe again insists that help is not coming. He just kept saying that the only way that we're getting out of here is that we get ourselves out of here. This ain't coming. And as the night wears on, Joe and Lorenzo finally accept they are now totally on their own. I felt that the world had abandoned us. After two days of waiting for rescue, the men must take their survival into their own hands and hike to the northern tip, where tourist boats will be moored. But it's a daunting journey. This island's 20 by 40 miles. It's uninhabited. There's nobody there. Pepe told us that there probably is commercial fishermen or the tail end of the tourist boats at the northern end of the island. And if we get there, we will be picked up. But the men have no idea how far down the coast they are. And they could face a 40-mile hike along the entire length of the island. The coast, as I saw, was the only logical choice. Nobody is going to go inland to look for us. Through the burning afternoon, the men pick their way over the broken rocks. But the hike is taking a toll on Lorenzo's sprained ankles. Lorenzo realized how hurt his feet were. But we couldn't stop. We had to keep going. Since morning, they've shared some of their meager supplies, dried fruit and a few sips of their remaining water. The lack of food is causing Joe's blood sugar level to plummet, bringing on the first symptoms of diabetes. Clumsiness, trembling, and a feeling of extreme weakness. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. Ow, ah, ah. Come on, man. Okay. We can make this. Come on. Okay. Keep going. Okay. The men press on. But after just three miles, their plan hits trouble. They route north 
has come to a dead end. They can go no further. We're saying to ourselves, what the hell do we do now? La corriente ahorita está pesada, pero con cuidado podemos cruzar. Yo salto primero para que vean cómo. Pepe said, you know what? I'm going to swim across. Between the current and rocks, I didn't think he had much of a chance to make it. The men know that beneath the surface, powerful currents are ripping through this ocean inlet. But Pepe makes it across. Wish me luck, buddy. But seriously overweight Lorenzo has two sprained ankles and quickly starts to struggle. It's a really strong current. The water surge got him and, and started, started taking him under. It's Joe's turn. I know I'm not a strong swimmer. Joe, jump! But he's paralyzed with fear. The hell with it. I'm not doing this. After a day's hiking, with little food, Joe's blood sugar level is crashing, bringing on extreme confusion. Come on, Joe! Stay here! Joe! I just said, you guys go ahead, go on. I'm just going to die here. I can't do it. Joe! What's the matter with you? It was terrifying, because I was afraid of getting pounded on the rocks. You get over here, jump now! Joe! Lorenzo encouraged me the way that we always talk, challenging each other. Jump, jump, jump for me! Gotta stay here. Daring each other to do something. Joe! And Lorenzo saying, don't be a sissy. Jump now! And I just thought to myself, what, well, you know, if you're gonna die, die trying. I was a sissy for nothing. How far do you think we got today, Larry? A fourth night brings respite from the heat. But now totally out of food, and having finished their last bottle of water, the situation is becoming desperate. And their thoughts turn to their families back home. I had uh, my wife and my, and my kids and, and a new grandchild to get back to. Uh, Lorenzo had his wife, his dad, his sisters. In California, Joe's wife is already beginning to fear the worst. It's hard to explain, but it was almost I lost half of me, and my heart had been completely ripped right out of my chest. In desperation, she sends her son down to Mexico to join the search party. 
I wanted my son to go find out what happened to his dad. As yet another day dawns. The men face the blistering heat with no water. Only fishing boats to the north can save them. We have to do whatever it takes to get to the northern end of the island. But they have no idea how much more of the coast they must navigate to get there. And Lorenzo is finding the pain of his sprained ankles unbearable. I can't do don't, don't, please don't touch. I can't do this anymore. Ah! He finally uh, just said, no, I can't do this. No, no, no. I can't go any further. I can't do this. Lorenzo was very upset. I can't go any further. He felt that he, he let us down. We realize that Lorenzo's mobility is pretty much down to zero. But we somehow needed to keep moving. I can walk. I can walk. We'll get you out of here. Joe knows they must find a way to transport crippled Lorenzo. But all they have to work with is the junk washed up on the shore. Pepe had an idea about uh, building a raft. He said, we'll be able to float Lorenzo through the water. We found some floats from old fishing nets. It's ready, Larry. We wanted him to not have to put any pressure on his feet, and it worked. Come on, guys, we can do this. Try to put your weight over to your Okay, I got it. Lorenzo didn't say anything, but I know, I know in his heart that he was, he was grateful. The men struggle along the scorched coastline. But five days of exposure to the relentless sun are putting huge pressure on Lorenzo's grossly overweight body. And his heart strains to keep him cool. Joe is fighting the effects of his diabetes. And having not drunk anything for 18 hours, his craving for water is becoming too much to bear. This can't go on. We can't do this. In desperation, Pepe returns to the trash washed up on the shoreline. I said, look what I found in this this blackish looking water. What the hell's that? The only water that was available on that island was from castaway bottles. Once you get thirsty enough, it didn't matter that that water stunk. It still tasted good. It was water. But in these extreme conditions, a few mouthfuls a day is barely enough to keep them alive. Without enough fluid, their bodies are at serious risk of overheating. And floating above the cooling effects of the sea, Lorenzo is especially vulnerable.
After another whole day battling through the water, there's still no sign of the fishing boats that will end their ordeal. Yes. Then, Pepe spots something among the rocks. This could be the sign of life they've been looking for. The first thing that went in my, through my mind was, I'm out of here. But then I see my tackle box from the first day. The men realize it's their own fishing tackle. They're back at the camp where they first beached four days ago. Our hearts just sank. We're back to the starting point. And now we're exhausted, we're out of food, we're out of water. Now we got nothing. As the day turns into yet another night, Lorenzo's morale plunges even further. I think it took a toll on Lorenzo. It started getting negative. It's all right, Larry. We ain't let this thing beat us. Joe brought Lorenzo on this trip to share his taste for adventure. But now, he can see his friend is starting to crack. We are going to see our families again. You and me, I am going to look after you now. And I told Lorenzo, we're not dying here. We're getting out of this. We're going home. It's just time. Just hang in there. The three men have managed to keep themselves going for eight days. But in scorching temperatures, and with no food and hardly any water, injured Lorenzo is weakening by the hour. Staying on like that? Yeah. I saw him as my friend who needed my help. That's it. We would go in the water about 6, 6.30 in the morning and start moving north. It was very slow progress. Sometimes we wouldn't go more than a mile or two in a day. Around one or two, we would start looking for um, a place where we could spend the night. It's an excruciating routine, made even harder by the fact that their scavenged water supply is running out. Those castaway bottles kept us alive. But as the days went on, we were finding less and less water. Water! We found maybe six ounces a day, maybe, that we would have to uh, split three ways. <laughs> so. When their precious few drops of water finally run out, they know they won't survive in this heat for much longer. Their hike north is now a race against time. I never really thought survival was as difficult as it is. After a week stumbling through the water, Joe has deep cuts in his legs. They're becoming infected, and blood poisoning is now a real threat. If it sets in, it could kill him within hours. 
This could be a lost cause. I could die here. And I told him, look, I'm gonna write a letter to my wife and my kids in case something happens to me. I love you all. Don't blame anybody of what happened to me. I put myself in the situation and I died here, but it's just something that happened. Joe asks Lorenzo if he too wants to write a message to his loved ones. Hey, Larry. No. I don't want to do that right now. And he said, no, I don't want to do that. Not yet. I don't want to be doing this. Uh, maybe he didn't want to really um, face a situation we were in or what the outcome might be. Ravenously hungry. The three men are desperate for anything to eat. Joe resorts to pulling tiny sea snails from the rocks. I gave one to Lorenzo, I go, here, eat it. And he looked at it and said, I'm not going to eat that. I knew that he had to have something, but at the same time, I can't force it down his throat. He'd have to eat it because he wanted to. When the sun is gone, the temperature plummets. So far, they've kept warm with driftwood fires, but now, Disaster strikes. What happened? It broke. A liar just it just fell apart in his hands. The salt, the salt water had just eaten it. From now on, the men have only each other to keep warm. With death closing in. The men are unaware their families have been searching for them. But they've joined the rescue teams that believe the men are fishing on the east side of the island. After six days searching, Joe's son calls home with devastating news. He says, I can't find him. He's not there, Mom. I don't know if we'll ever find him. And he was, he was heartbroken. After eight days missing, the search is finally abandoned. The men are feared lost at sea. I had given up hope. The reality of it was he was dead and wasn't coming back. The men struggle on northwards. But still, there's no sign of any fishing boats. Lorenzo is becoming increasingly depressed and irrational. Stop, stop. We gotta go back. I lost my glasses. We gotta go back, we gotta go back. I want my glasses. Hey, so, things are gonna be okay. He just totally panicked, he lost it. I need my glasses. I need my glasses. I need my glasses. I'm trying to convince him, okay, look, now I'll be your eyes. But there's no consoling him. For him, it was the end of the world. Lorenzo was starting to lose touch with reality. Lorenzo asked me if he could be on back of the raft. He wanted to trade places with him. I want to go behind for a while, OK? Delirious with dehydration, 
Joe takes up his friend's offer of a ride, without realizing how desperate Lorenzo's condition has become. I heard a gurgling noise behind me. Larry! Larry! And I turned around. Larry! And his head is underwater. Larry! Get down! Larry! Larry! I told Pepe, he's in trouble. We must get him out of the water. Are you a major? Joe, are you a major? I'm talking to him, and there's no response. Larry! Larry! The look on his face just, it, it just, it wasn't right. I start checking for a pulse. I checked his neck, his wrist. It was just nothing. After 12 days battling to stay alive, Lorenzo has finally succumbed. I told Pepe he's dead. He passed away. He just, he just died, and I couldn't do anything. That's probably the worst moment of my life. At first, I was angry that, that he abandoned me. We should be seeing this through the end. But then I realized it was a big ordeal for him. And his body just gave out. Joe decides to leave his best friend's body on the beach in full view of the ocean and any passing boat. I want him found. I want his body found, even if it's just skeleton. I want him to be found, be taken home. I'm gonna come back for you. I said my goodbyes to him, and I told him that uh, I have to leave. It broke my heart. Joe and Pepe struggled to keep moving north, barely clinging to life with every step. We were living moment by moment. It was no longer, can I do the 10 more feet? It was right now, can I take another step? Battling his diabetes, it's a miracle that Joe has survived 13 days without food or proper water. But now he fears the end is near and he faces an agonizing, anonymous death. If I die, nobody is ever gonna find my bones. I was at rock bottom. Joe, 
Pepe turns around and yells at me, did you see that boat? He was very excited. I didn't think there was a boat. I thought he was hallucinating. All of a sudden, I'm alone. Joe and Pepe are finally saved by two Mexican fishermen. It was exhilarating to see this boat. Thank God this is over. I was relieved, uh, uh, like a big burden had been lifted off my shoulder. That afternoon, Joe's wife, Margaret, gets a call from her son. He says, they found Dad. He walked out this morning. The, the fisherman picked him up. He's OK. I mean, I was elated. But at the same time, I just knew that there was more wrong. He told me that Lorenzo is, has passed away. And I says, oh, my god. See my wife, my son, my daughter, all of them. It was great. I just felt bad that uh, Lorenzo wasn't there to share, it, to share it. Lorenzo's body was recovered and taken back to his wife and family in the US. If Lorenzo had gone one more day, he would have been with us. He'd be here now. <laughs>